Okay, so we're going to pretend that the password, current password rule that we've just created uh, needs to be used for another use. So for example, if the user deletes their account, we want to ask for the current password, or if they enable two-factor authentication or disable two-factor authentication, we want to ask for the password. It doesn't really matter why, but we want to move this now over to a global rule. So the first thing that we could do and the first step that I'd probably take is to open up something like App Service Provider and under the boot method go ahead and extend Laravel's validator and to do this it's really really simple we just use the validator facade and we go ahead and use the uh, extend method now this gives us a chance to actually name this rule now which is really really important so I can actually name this and it's a little bit easier than having this dumped in our controller because now we can actually see what this is doing or you could give it a really explicit name like matches current password so let's go and create out a closure here now this closure is slightly different we get the attribute through so of course we can use that in our custom uh, validation message we get the value through which of course makes sense but this time we get something called parameters and we also get an instance of the validator as well just in case we need to access that I've not found myself needing to do that but I'm going to go ahead and dump on parameters so we can check out what this is. So let's come over to our action controller. Let's get rid of this closure and we can pipe these now. We don't have to have them in an array, but I'm just going to go ahead and do this for simplicity. And let's come over to the browser and just check this out. So you'll see that we get dumped here um, a uh, array. Now this is useful if you have a um, validation rule which requires things being passed to it. So let's just say one, two, three. It doesn't really matter what this is or what it does. If I refresh this, you can see we get one, two, three. Now, uh, like I said, that's useful for things like max length, for example, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But anything after the colon here is gonna be included in that parameters list. So at least you know what that is now in case you do need to use that. And like I said, we've got a validator instance here that we can use to access. So in here then, we're just gonna do exactly the same thing, but this time it's a truthy check. So we wanna return true if this passes and we wanna return false if it doesn't pass. So in our case, it's pretty straightforward. The hash check method returns a Boolean. So we can just use this and we can of course pass the value in. And the question here is, uh, and the problem that's arisen here is, now where do we get the user from? So uh, if you know that you're gonna be using this rule whenever a user is signed in, that's great. But what I'd recommend you do is maybe use something like the optional helper, just so when we access the user globally, it doesn't fail. So of course, from that, we're gonna access the password. So if you're not aware, the optional helper will return a kind of empty object if this is null, and then you uh, trying to access the password attribute on that or the property on that won't fail. So let's go back and check this out. Now I'm just gonna give that a refresh and you can see that that has failed. If I don't enter it, we get password field is required. If I enter a password that is wrong, that doesn't work. And when I enter my correct password, that works. Now you probably noticed here that we have a weird validation message. Now it's up to you where you place this. Let's go and grab this key here and let's come over to lang en and validation. And let's just pop this in here. So you can do this if you want to. So you could say your, or just say current password wrong. It doesn't really matter what we type here, like so. And of course this would work perfectly if you did actually want to use translations in your app. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this. We just need the key because uh, Laravel will look inside of the validation file by default. Let's go ahead and enter something and you can see we get current password is wrong type in the correct password and of course it works. So you can do that, but if you wanted to not put this inside of your language files, if you're not, if you don't really care about translations, you can just pass this as the third argument to here. So that kind of uh, does, well, it does exactly the same thing. So you can see current password is wrong. So you can type that in there, or if you wanted to, if you really wanted to, you could reference the uh, underscore method, which will go ahead and pluck out a translation and you could pluck out the translation manually. So you could say validation dot current password or whatever you wanted to, it doesn't really matter. So uh, that is how we output our rule. What we're gonna do now is move over to look at a class based, ex a class -based extension of the validator just in case you have a huge amount of code in here 
and you maybe want to split this up into a class and have the benefit of invoking protected methods and doing any other kind of PHP magic. So let's move over to the next part and have a look at how we might do that.